When discussing Valve games, titles such as the Half-Life series, Left 4 Dead, and Portal all come up as revolutionary games in people's heads. And although each game does an amazing job of incorporating character design as well as crafting an innovative story, there's one game that gets overshadowed by all the others, and it's only $9.99. Initializing in 3, 2, 1. Gary's Mod. What is in there say about a game that took over five years of my life? And I say that proudly. So a quick little editor's note, um, I did the math, it's not actually five years, it's about 0.2. So, sorry, I made a fucky-wucky. But even with that much time under my belt, I still don't think I've experienced all that has to offer. With such a simple name, you wouldn't think that a game called Gary's Mod would be one of the most innovative titles Valve has ever released. But you'd be wrong. With such games as Cry Fear, The Ship, and Black Mesa all being created within the same engine as Gary's mod, one must ask how a mod competes with the well-crafted story of Half-Life or the amazing multiplayer mechanics of a game like Counter-Strike. While with an arsenal of tools at your disposal, as well as an assortment of game modes, one would feel overwhelmed with the number of hours one could put into a single server, let alone an entire game. So I'm gonna try to give my best interpretation of why Gary's mod became as successful as it did. But with all great games, comes a beginning. Gary Newman was a video game programmer who started developing games in the early 2000s. After dropping out of college and working at his parents' house, he started developing his first game called Face Wound. Now, Face Wound wasn't anything special, just your average new ground side-scroller. But on the side, he started working on a bigger project for a game he recently started playing this game being Half-Life 2. Since his computer programming skills weren't advanced enough to create a full-blown source-based game, he resorted to developing a mod for the popular source game under the name Gary's Mod. The first launch of his mod was released in December of 2004. Most players criticized it for how similar it was to the already existing mod, JB Mod, that was used for the Half-Life physics. However, after continuing to develop the game and releasing several updated versions of his mod, it started to gain popularity. Valve eventually contacted Newman about his mod, and on November 29, 2006, Gary's mod was put on the Steam store for the price of $9.99, where it remains the same price today. Gary's mod sold over 5,000 copies, with critics giving it raving reviews and audiences loving it. And as of September of 2021, Gary's mod has over 20 million copies sold worldwide and has an overwhelmingly positive review ratio by the fans. Now with the history lesson out of the way, let's get into the actual game. Gary's mod was made to be an open world sandbox that allowed the player to fully manipulate objects and move the world around them. There's no objective to Gary's mod, so this allowed the player to pretty much do whatever they wanted. This opened up the gateway to thousands of uses of the models and props provided within the game. And with the popularity of the video sharing website YouTube growing, it wasn't long before a string of videos popped up of people creating skits through the uses of the tools within the game. One of the most popular series at the time, the Gmod Idiobots, were all made through the Gary's Mod Sandbots world and the manipulation of the models and props. The creative ways people can make fun of pop culture references and parody popular media created a creative way to people express feeling and humor. You wouldn't steal a baby. You wouldn't shoot a policeman and then steal his helmet. You wouldn't go to the toilet in his helmet and then send it to the policeman's grieving widow. 
and then steal it again. Since the game was licensed by Valve, that meant that you could use any model from any of the Valve games you've purchased to get the desired outcome you were looking for. And with a thriving mod community presence, the possibilities for what you could create were limitless. It was like a gamer's version of Legos. You could take those same elements and translate them into the Half-Life games. And I'm not talking about the maps, I mean the full Half-Life 2 story games. Being able to spawn whatever you wanted into the Half-Life games just added to the thousands of hours you and your friends could mess around spawning in different things to see what was possible. There was never a limit to creating contraptions or machines that added to the experience of playing an already enjoyable game. What if you didn't want to play the Half-Life story missions? No problem! Thanks to the addition of the Steam Workshop, there were elements you could download made by members of the community. This ranged from weapons, to machines, to full-blown playable maps. And there were so many That's maps. Big. There were adventure maps, horror maps, fantasy maps, build maps, role playing maps, mystery maps, maps from other games, maps from movies. Literally any map you wanted, you could find. Want a Five Nights at Freddy's map? Boom, there you go. Oh, you want the characters from FNAF 2? Boom, no problem. Want a Minecraft map? Boom, give me something harder. Hold on, hold on. You want a map of the hit popular TV show Squid Game, including all the game rooms and dorm rooms? Want to play solo or don't have a friend to play with? There are maps solely based on story or solo play. Scrolling through all the different kinds of maps, it's hard to find something that hasn't been recreated into a Gary's Mod map. And the majority of these maps had an actual story that you could follow, and sequels that continued the story from the first one. Now that only covers the maps. The workshop offered millions of add-ons you could add just with a simple push of a button. People made reskins of NPCs, weapons from other video games, machines that for the most part worked, entities, and so much more. And the best part about it is that these were all made within the community. Ordinary people were capable of making full-blown indie games and game entities. And with how simple Steam made it to make the elements thanks to programs like Blender and Gmod Publisher, anybody that knew what they were doing could make and incorporate them into the game. Now up to this point, all that I've said is within the single player game mode. But ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Gary's Mod multiplayer servers. Here is where one could spend hundreds of hours on just one game mode. Some of my greatest memories were hopping on a dark RP servers and causing as much mayhem as possible. Before, of course, the 16 year old admin in training had the chance to ban me. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up. Disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. But did I blame him? No, I was a little goblin going around prop locking people's bases and then proceeded to pretend like it did the second I got teleported to that admin sit. Hell, one of my most recent videos is me and my friend just messing around on a Star Wars RP server. To this day, I'm still banned from some of those servers, and when I get that you are banned from the server pop up, I reminisce those days of having the most fun in a $10 game than I've ever had. Since the majority of these servers could be bought and run by anyone with a subscription, finding another server to play on wasn't a problem. The servers I didn't get banned on, I've had some of the best and funniest interactions I've ever had on a video game. And there were so many game modes to choose from. You could join a sandbox server and build anything your creative little mind could come up with. If you were uncreative like me, you could explore many of the role-playing servers Gary's Mod had to offer. Dark RP being one of these examples. Basically being an oversaturated version of real life. You can attack this guy good! Here you could build a gun shop, you could run for mayor, you could kill the mayor, and with a bunch of custom jobs made by servers, there was really never a limit to what you could be and allowed you to make money in a variety of different ways. Tired of real life? Go explore Tatooine on Star Wars RP. Go train to become a clone trooper. Go rise in the ranks and command your own army of clone troopers. Want to be a Jedi? Well, for the low price of $50, that can be yours. Ever wanted to see what our US military is like? Well, thanks to Gary's mod, you get a real life sequence of what our US troopers go through on a daily basis. If that wasn't enough, you could survive a zombie apocalypse, watch totally legal full movies in the cinema, break out of prison, cross the border, become a wizard, become a prop, become a monster. The list goes on and on and on. And these were just the game modes. Each server had its own unique mods and add-ons that made a completely different experience from the last. Although it did come at a cost. <laughs>
but even with my 100 gigabyte folder, I still manage to get missing textures and servers. But a lot of the main fun comes from the people you meet in these game modes. The majority of people on my friends list are people I've met playing Gary's Mod, and they're some of the most diverse people I would never thought I would have met in a video game. And that's the beauty of Gary's Mod, the complete randomness. The idea of arguing with a pony from My Little Pony about who killed who first in a video game is a sentence I don't think would have ever came out of my mouth if Gary's mod didn't exist. I mean, just take a look at this situation here. You have a guy with a pistol going up to a swole Yoda and shooting him, while the asparagus from VeggieTales and the Tesla soldier from Fallout watch nearby. Whoever you are, I just dispatched a Verde assault team to your location. Have a nice day. What other game can you say that encounter is possible to replicate? Try going up to someone on the street and explaining that situation. You know how I mentioned people could create their own Gary's Mod servers? Well, some people have managed to make a good amount of money hosting servers. Since Gary's Mod pretty much runs as a host platform for individual servers, that means that the owner of these servers could implement their own methods of in-game transactions such as VIP statuses and admin abilities. With some of the most popular server owners making close to $2,000 a month just on donations alone. Now that may not seem a lot to your average summer working 17 year old carpenter, but the fact that a game like Gary's Mod is capable of making people money close to 2 months of minimum wage working is fucking insane. Remember when I mentioned how YouTube videos start to appear of people playing Gary's Mod? Well surprisingly this method is one of the main reasons why Gary's Mod got as popular as it is today. Channels such as Vanoss Gaming, h 2 Delirious, and Venturian Tale started to record themselves and their friends just messing around on different custom maps and servers. Saying these videos were successful would be an understatement. You wouldn't think that a bunch of guys dressed up as Mario characters trying to find unique ways to kill each other would be as entertaining as it is. But Gears Mod had this perfect platform that made just watching people play it enjoyable. Even to this day, the same content creators are making the same type of videos they made 8 years ago. If that alone doesn't say how much content can be jam-packed in a game such as Gary's Mod, I don't know what will. Other creators such as CNanners would play game modes with his friends such as Prop Hunt, Trouble in Terrace Town, and Murder. These videos would be one of the main things that shaped Gary's Mod's player base to what it is today. Hanging out with your friends or random people you encounter, and just doing whatever random shit you could come up with. And YouTube videos weren't the only thing being made in Gary's Mod. Full blown short films have been produced. Since Gary's Mod had a camera tool that allowed the HUD to be removed, this allowed people to use this as the base camera to produce such films as The Convenience Store, Contain and Breach, and many more. Full blown productions that I highly recommend watching. And if you want your films to be a little more advanced and professional, Steam had Source Filmmaking, which allowed you to take the settings and characters from Valve games and animate them to make them do whatever you wanted. This is where the term Source Filmmaking or SFM originated from, as it allowed many of the infamous shorts and films you see be made possible. Steam themselves actually used this program in order to make many of the shorts for their games, such as the TF2 Meet the series. If you want to get into it yourself, there are many great tutorials online that allow you to learn the basics and functions all on your own. It's one of the great ways to get into animation and filmmaking if you're interested in that kind of stuff. People were also creating actual works of art and artistic mediums using the technique of posing and props. And I mean, there are some impressive creations that are made within Gary's Mod. Like some of these, I would actually hang on my wall just for how cool they look. To put it simply, in the words of IGN, It is a little something for everyone. No, but seriously, when you think about all the things you can do in Gary's Mod, and how many things are possible to achieve, it's no surprise that Gary's Mod became as successful as it did. A game that offered pretty much 50 different game styles all for $10, there was nothing like it at the time. Not to mention the modding, filming, and media capabilities it offered to the community. No game has successfully replicated what Gary's Mod has done, because Gary's Mod perfected it. The game has built such a loyal and dedicated fanbase, as well as some talented people in the modding community. The game has spawned its own lore, to the point to where there are entire videos of people analyzing theories about maps in the game. Even today, there are patches still being released for the game, while a new game, Sandbots, is in development. Just further showing how active the developers are and showing appreciation for the community they've built. With all the time I spent in Gary's Mod, from the bad and good experiences, I've never felt a dull moment. From raiding bases in Dark RP, to manipulating my friends in murder, Gary's Mod really has turned into a game for everyone. Get that motherfucker!
no, 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 no. Fucking Jinsek, Jesus ah! Christ. Oh, you have a key card. Oh, you want to set up shop, bro? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make my little hut. I'm just gonna slowly inch towards the base more. Yo, bro. Or, no, you can't be doing all this. No. What? Why? It's my house. Nah, well, you're being a victim of the fucking place. guns. That's... You can't do that. This, this is supposed to be a storefront. Like, this is a little much, you know? What's the issue? Right on the bill. Also, his his props are literally in our doorway, like prevent. Uh, it's not in your doorway. Go in the weed. Build where somewhere else. You can't do this. Who put a cap? <laughs> I think that was you guys. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You guys can get in your house out you want. I just need to go to my house. Do it. That sign's not up to code, compadre. Your authority leaves at the door. All this is my land. Actually. Your authority ends at the door, my friend. Don't worry, I have yeah, my ID. Yeah, uh, 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 I don't know about all that. Oh my god. You <laughs> could have arrested him. Right hmm, I could just walk right in here. Oh, ban me. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Downloading 440k Imperial Field Cannons? Why? A hundred out of two sixty nine. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, no, 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 don't leave. Me through. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Yeah, dare you. Dude. Oh, you're missing. You're missing. You suck. You're missing everything. No, he's not. There's you're a missing thing. everything. There, there's a thing in the way. Oh my God, you're missing every bullet. You suck. <laughs> Piece of meat on my shoulder, be no, Sergeant Mater, that's the biggest like, Sergeant Rana. there is. That's that's who you gonna follow. Like, oh, Second I Lieutenant. The one from software makes it. That's right you're just. You. Who the fuck are you? What the fuck are you? What the fuck am you look I? Like a fucking rotten. You look like a raisin, motherfucker. Yeah, at least I don't look like a fucking scrapped iPhone looking ass. Wait, just so I can make it look uh, believable, I'm gonna give y'all restraints real quick. I'm just, just her now, but I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna get y'all to the entrance, so. Oh, no, I can hear that. oh no, don't test yeah, on us. I am no, aware. don't test on us, please. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're totally oh God, we're please right, don't, don't, yes, I don't wanna, totally I don't wanna like die. Testing please help, please, please help. Please help, help. help oh, us, so help us. Them. What's your reasoning for having a uh, 2D class out of nowhere? Not in D block. Uh, I'm trying to take them to test. Um, you're gonna take them to testing. Where's your scientist? I, I'm, I'm looking for. That's why I'm here. So take them back to D block. Oh, we're fucked. Hey, that's not D block. My butt wasn't good enough for your patriarchy. My butt right. doesn't stop for no one. Just I'm fucking <laughs> stuck. <laughs> Now. Where's the knife? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to be exploring the presumably haunted Gary's Mod map. Hopefully it's as haunted as everyone says it is. My timbers better have been shivered by the time I'm done with this map. The hell was that? You just hear that sound? Okay, this is it. You know, I have some pretty fond memories playing this map. I used to play it when it was like early stages. I guess people are like afraid of the noises, cause like when you're alone in this map. Like when there's no one in this map with you. You feel very uh... 
Okay, doors shut on their own, so I don't know why I'm tripping doors shut on their own in this game. Actually, wait. None of these doors shut. Why the fuck did only that one shut? You know, I'm gonna be honest. I am starting to get... Okay, there's lights. I am starting to get a little bit nervous, but, you know, that's alright. Just a Gary's Mod map. Oh, so bring back memories. I used to base in here all the time. This is what this was like my main base area. It's weird only like how some of the doors close, but not all of them. I don't really like that only some of the doors close. Jail cells, of course. Thought I just heard someone walk for a second. My mind's playing tricks on me. It'd probably be better if I went camera, honestly. Oh. Oh, did you guys see that? That was spooky. Okay, we're gonna save this for last. I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna explore this just yet. I don't wanna explore the other areas. This was my second base option. Like, if that downward area was always taken, I would always choose the base here. Yeah. I had some good-ass base spots, honestly. Like, my setup were fucking insane. I'm never irritated. Okay, I guess we'll just take this down. This is where you don't want to be. That camera's definitely not on the POV. Oh, fuck. That tin of water scared me. I mean, I can see, you know, why people would be nervous playing this server alone. Because, you know, it, it does seem a little bit uh, empty without people. There's a certain word for it where uh, things are like, don't seem scary because it's so busy. But since like there's like no one around, it's scary. Some word like that. I don't know why I just got like a big fucking shiver down my spine. I have no idea why, but I did. Could you go in here? I swear you could base in here. No? Okay. I guess there were some iterations of maps where you could base in there. I never liked this area. This area is like fucking like why did it need to be so big? Like it's literally like two whole things. Like this is where the gangs would post up. Like look at all this. Look at there's like a room over here too. Like no one needs this much space. It's like too much. Yeah, there were so many rooms, and there's an upstairs too. Even more space. Oh. Okay. There he is again. So is he just gonna keep like popping up around these areas? Is that like the whole thing? Is that he's basically just gonna be, you know, walking around here? He's not gonna, like, chase me. That would really be fucking scary. If he just started running towards me. Like, if he was at the end of that tunnel right now and he and I just saw, like, a black mold just start running towards me, I'd fucking shit myself. Let's take the elevator. Nice. Alright, I think I've explored pretty much, uh, every nook and cranny of this map. Um, yeah, I can definitely see the appeal of why someone wouldn't want to play this alone. Uh, not only is it very lonely, but a very eerie atmosphere with the sounds of a bustling city. Huh. 